So what, why are you singing the odd couple thing? Absolutely Did you know no that was idea. the odd couple thing? No, I didn't. What? You must have heard it somewhere. I think it was, I'll tell you where you heard it. It's uh, Shane Jacobson and I can't yeah, remember the other guy's name. You they're, think it's on a radio it's ad? It's a play, yeah. It's a radio ad, definitely a radio ad. Yeah. Well, we are the odd couple. I mean, <laughs> it could well, be. You, are you aware of this show, The Odd Couple? It was originally a Neil Simon Wasn't play. there a Matthew Perry version of that? Uh, there was. Yeah, mm. there was. Later on. There Let's go, go, baby. Bingo. But there was a uh, – there was um, – it was a famous couple, It was couple, in the wasn't 70s, it? yeah. Um, it was um, Jack Klugman was uh, played Oscar. Klugman. And uh, Felix. Felix. Felix Unger, Unger was played by. Who was he played by? Oh, that's um, not the name of the actor. Right, no, no. <laughs> Felix Unger was. Um, I, I'm i definitely aware of the show. I don't know why they're odd. Yeah. Is one, one pompous Tony and the other Randall one? was Felix Unger. Is so Tony like, Randall. One is really tidy. Yes. And. Has a kind of different approach, and the others really are like a bit of a slob, and wow. that's why they're the odd Which couple. one are you? Uh, I reckon I'd be the probably the yeah, a bit both tidy and See, a bit. Yeah. I think which we're, who would you be? Are we becoming more alike? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know about that, Trev. You know, you know if we like you know were women, we'd be in sync. In, <laughs> you got a spare? You got a spare? Uh, <laughs> Is that what happens, is it? <laughs> no. Doesn't that happen in offices? I don't and know. And homes? Homes, I can imagine. Yeah. Ask Joe. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, he had, you had two girls at home? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We're not really the odd couple. No. We don't live together for a start. No. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of the name. It was, it's Joe. The guy used to be the dude that danced with the stars. The other guy in the Australian production. Todd McKinney. Todd McKinney. Oh. There you go. Man, I'm all over this. Yeah, Todd McKinney and, and Shane Jacobson. Yeah, Shane Jacobson. Got, they do have a radio ad. I have heard it. Yeah. They, they, Shane they Jacobson joke about it, yeah. would play, I think, Oscar. Right. So the slop. No, the you slop, think? Slop, big yeah, guy. You think? And then um, what's his name? Todd McKinney would play Felix, so the tidy, the right. tidy, uptight one. And um, It'd Jack, be a low rating. I remember watching it. I remember watching it as a kid. Right. It'd it be a low rating York. documentary yeah. series about us, but it'd still be funny. Oh, yeah. We'd provide the laughs, mate. A document if they made a series about Just us. Just following yeah. out. Follow us. See, Stig's convinced that there's an, that people would have an interest in the junket part of our life. Yeah. <clears> and you know, all travel, that stuff. Our travel, but I, I yeah. always say to him, sure, but yeah. the best stuff can't be filmed. Yeah. You know, it's like you're at Apple Park, <clears throat> you're in Cupertino, it's like, you yeah. know, and you can imagine the behind the camera person says, what are you doing today? And so then you talk, and it, but they only yeah. show you, not them. And it's like, oh, today we've got to go to Apple Park, we we'll do this. But then you can't film all that. No. Yeah, you can. like it's, you've got to take our word for it. You can't take a cameraman on the golf buggy with you to the fitness centre. You can't go yeah. into the fitness centre. Yeah. Like you can't film any of it. Yeah, exactly. I know. So we'd have to get a special. How uh, do you make special permission from? You know, how do you make something of the yeah. ridiculous life us, that we lead? Do you reckon they let it? That well, they already film our podcast when we film the yeah. when we do the podcast. But it's kind of not yeah. enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you sort of pitching? Are you pitching an idea here? No, right? no. I'm, I've just Stig right. has always been convinced that there's, there's interest in that kind of stuff, and I'd yeah. say there's not enough of the behind the scenes that Maybe. we can film that yeah. is of use. Okay. Uh, about the way so we'd be like, uh, like imagine, imagine we went okay, 2025. Over the course <laughs> of the whole year, yeah. we're going to film follow us just bits of everything we do, right? So yeah. you'd follow you going to John Stanley like six or seven times out of the year. Yeah, yeah. You'd follow you doing your Sky News, sometimes in the studio, sometimes at home. Yep. You'd follow me doing the same kind of things, yep. right? Then you'd have us going on planes and taking yep. the mickey, you know, you sitting up front, me sitting down back, whatever. <laughs> um, me sitting in business class and you up the back, is that what you're claiming? Um, yeah, well, you do upgrades regularly. <laughs> uh, and, you know, just all that. Yeah. I, I just don't know that there's... Like, no. Who cares? <laughs> I don't know. Although... <clears throat> if if um, I reckon if we'd need to be, I think we'd need to be together for it to be. Isn't like that what you, we're talking about? No, no. But I mean, on camera at the same time, like oh. doing a lot of that stuff. Um, that'd be the best bit where we're just yeah. bouncing off each other like we do here. Yeah. It, it's that'd be that'd be the uh, the meat on the bone, if you know what I mean. That'd be the the main part of the show. Yeah. The other stuff. Could come off as being a little bit, uh, you know, look at me, how exactly. important I am. Yeah. I'm on a plane going somewhere. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I stopped sharing a lot of that, like, you know, the, the whole trip part of it. Yeah. I stopped sharing that bit 
uh, on social media and yep. sort of focus more on the reason I'm on the trip yes. part. So yeah, no, that's fair. Became more about the event rather than myself. Yep. You know? Yeah. That's fair. So, was there something yeah. that made you think no, about that? No, no, I just think, you know, I think people are just, I've done it enough and people are. It's like, yes, Stephen, okay, you're on a plane, thank you. you're traveling again. We know you travel a lot and yeah. that's, yeah. My wife always says to people, it's the only way she knows where I am. <laughs> so she, oh, well, let's look at his Instagram. Where yeah. is he today? That's how she knew I bought a Cupra. <laughs> so you didn't discuss she it with agreed. her? She agreed. Right. She agreed. Would you, did you need permission to do that? <clears you>? Absolutely. <laughs> but it's your money though. It's our money. Our money. <laughs> but isn't it a business? Isn't it your business? It's our business. Oh, is, is she on the board or something? Is she or? She's, uh, she out. she's definitely. Okay, because Joe, Joe it's our is, business. Uh, yeah, she's, uh, I, I, my business is set up like a trust, so Joe's part of the trust. Yeah, and, mate, yeah. it's her business she as gets, well, uh, champ. She gets distribution <coughs> yeah, <laughs> as well, so. Well, man is the I marketing guess, manager. I guess Joe's on the board. Man is the marketing manager for EFTM. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's good. Because yep. uh, yeah, I didn't. I just, uh, I just bought my car. There was no real. For, I just. She knew I was looking. And, when, I'm yeah, not at that point. Made the de- made the decision, and I said, "Yeah, I've, I've got." I mean, getting, I basically I'm going to get did. that one. I basically did, yeah. but yeah, I hear about it a lot. Yeah, and she didn't say how much does that cost, and I say, no. uh, my answer was enough. Yeah, I just say <laughs> not more than the last one. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, my, well, my, my justification. My it's like reply, I'm not spending more than I was last month because she knew I'd ordered the Tesla, right? And yeah. I said, look, it's 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 actually less than what the Tesla would have cost me. That's, ah, what I said. that's a smart. That's dude. what I said. <clears throat> that yeah. is very smart. I was telling the truth. <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> this is this is the show. <laughs> there you have it, mate. There you and have then it. and then they cut to Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and her, and she and, said, "I've never driven the car." No, and she, they'll be like, here, they'll, "They'll hand her a bit of paper and a, and a texture, and they'll go, write how much you think the car was.'" And she'll write twenty seven thousand, and she'll oh. go like this, and they'll go higher. Yeah, uh, that was the deposit. <laughs> <laughs> and <just>, yeah, <laughs> know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm but saying. that's the problem is they'd be involved, and it would not oh, be yeah. good for our yeah, marriages. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, world's colliding. We don't want that. Where's Trevor now? Oh, yeah. he's he's at an Apple event, really busy. Yeah. Did you know he's at a you know a spa somewhere? I'm like, oh man, <laughs> what? You know, that's never happened on an Apple event, by the yeah, way. But never. you think yeah. about like a Samsung event when, or you know yeah. what? We were talking earlier about we got invited to an event in in far north Queensland. In Cambridge, <coughs> yeah. And imagine, so on day one, they're interviewing us. We're talking about this thing we just saw, or whatever. What are you doing tomorrow? Great Barrier Reef, you know, boat, whatever. Look at whales, whatever the hell goes yeah, on yeah. up there. And then they cut to Amanda and Joe sitting in a room together going, <laughs> what do you think the boys are doing now? Well, they said they've got a day full of meetings. And then they then they cut to live vision of us on a boat and they're like, what the? Yeah. They'd be on for young and old. And they're, they're filming them doing the housework or something at home. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Looking after the feed, kids. Kids feed, are screaming. Yeah, kid. All that stuff. <laughs> yeah. The kids haven't screamed for months, but they'll they'll cut to footage that they oh, got. Yeah. File footage of the kids tantrum. screaming. Yeah. Someone having a tantrum. Anyway, that's two blokes uh, yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. For ready, ready-made TV series. If anyone's interested, yeah, <laughs> the Athens tape. That's still a TV <laughs> series in well, the hey, archive. I'd, we, that's, what, what do you call that's private. a black book? What do you, you know the the, maybe the scripts that sit ready to be bought? The blacklist. The blacklist. Yeah, right, that's a, that's a Netflix <clears> special. <throat> oh, we said it. We remember we, that was a private feed. I know. That's a Netflix special waiting to happen. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, I don't know. Really good to look away. <laughs> All right, uh, that's enough of this rubbish. Welcome to Two Blokes Talking Tech. Not a bad price. With Trevor Long from EFTM.com. Really handy device. And Stephen Fennec from techguide.com.au. Episode 627, thanks to the amazing people at Netgear who bring you amazing Wi-Fi solutions for your home. And Arlo, who bring you home security that you can trust and use with ease. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. Stephen Fennec, Trevor Long. Stephen, hello. G'day there. Great to have your company. Um, I, I've discovered that I kind of don't need to be on any ministerial mailing lists. I don't need to follow Parliament. I don't yeah. need to be involved at all because I just get phone calls when yeah. when Me things too. happen in Parliament, yeah. Yeah. like they pass a digital ID legislation. I get yeah. the phone calls. So the government, Australian federal government has passed a legislation relating to digital ID. This has been in the works for some time. <clears throat> I have many a view on this. Yeah. But I've also heard many a commentary. And yeah. I got to say, it troubles me. It yeah, troubles me how it's being reported by some people. And this yeah. goes to: Have you done radio with this already? Yes. Or TV, you've done stuff. It's radio. You've spoken about it. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I did to radio on this um, myself. Yeah. Look, if you mention the Australia card while talking about digital ID, I just want to stab you in the neck. 
Like, <laughs> I'm done. That's yeah. That's come on, not folks. It. That's, that's not nothing it. to do with it. Let's be real, though. The Australia card was a real proposition back a long time ago. Yeah. The idea was to create a single uh, identity card that worked for all Australians in all places, yep. and it was there was an uproar because it was a privacy and the government knows too much about you, all those yep. kind of things. Yep. Never got through, and it would never happen anymore. But this is a very different thing, Steve. Yeah, it is, yeah. This is about creating a way that we as Australians can – a sign up for things, log into things, yeah. proof who verify we are. things yeah. mm. uh, by simply saying, "Yeah, here's my digital ID. Yeah. Here's a tick that says that." Yeah, I spoke. In fact, this has been going off so long. I spoke late last year to the former Minister for Customer Service in New South Wales, Victor Dominello, on the Nine Podcast Anatomy of Scam about yeah. this. Yeah, and he was. Because he's on the federal, and he's a liberal um, uh, politician, was. Yep. He's yep. In, he's not in parliament anymore. He's on the federal advisory board for this, which is great, showing bipartisanship in that sense. Yep. He, he was so – I mean, he's, he's a very uh, forward-thinking technology guy, but he made a fantastic analogy to me, which I will steal from him, and he said, think of it like a digital shoe. You are completely cool to be a hippie and walk the streets without shoes on. Mm. But there's always going to be times when you need to be wearing thongs. Mm. And there'll be another time when you have to be wearing closed, enclosed shoes. There might also be times when you're required to wear steel cap boots. And those are the levels of identity protection that might exist. Yeah. So <clears throat> the example there might be, you go today to a nightclub, a bar, a pub or something, and the bouncer says, Stephen, you young gentleman, improve your identity to me. And you pull out your driver's license and you show them. Yep. And what you're showing that bouncer, this random person you don't know, you're showing them your name, your address, your date of birth, yeah. and your driver's and license your number. Yep. Now, they don't need to know where you live. Mm. They don't need to know your date of birth. All they need to know is that you are 18. Yeah. So imagine you walk in and you don't use... They don't need to know your date of birth for that? <clears throat> no. They don't need to know that. They just need to know you are government. Yeah. Ver you are verified as being over yeah. 18. Okay. That is all this is about in that sense. So in today in New South Wales, you can walk into a registered club and use the driver's license app, the Service New South Wales app, to sign into a registered club using a QR yeah, code. Yeah. It's it. unbelievable. It. Yeah. So why wouldn't we have the same thing in other circumstances <clears throat> that prove things like our identity? And then the, the top end of that is I'm applying for a job at ASIO. <laughs> okay, yeah. and the just the application process requires me to submit a, a resume, da da da, da yeah. and also prove my identity. Yeah. So instead of bringing out my passport, passport typing in Medicare all the details, card. taking a photo yeah. of it, yeah. photo of my license, photo of six different things, some bank statements, some energy statements, whatever, yeah. upload all of that. It proves who I am, and then they interview me. Yeah. Instead of that, I simply click on the MyGov ID button on the application form. I get a message on my phone. I get a code. I type in the code, and it goes. This is really Trevor, yeah. and then I submit my things. That's yeah, all it is. That's it, and and uh, the 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 whole sort of digital repository of your ID being in one central place, rather than you having to share it fifty times to Optus, to Medibank, to Telstra, and they've all got now a copy of all your personal identifiable information on their servers. This now means that rather than that that, that being out in the wild. It's now in one place and protected. So we were calling on this during the Optus breach and Medibank. Yeah. We said yeah. there needs to be a central government thing where you can prove who you are by confirming it with a with a fingerprint, fingerprint face whatever ID, it whatever it needs to be. Now here's the thing, though. So the, but you the, just the, said it's stored yeah. in different repositories. There's, yeah. there's no sense of mm. any additional storage here. No. This The passport office still holds your passport details. Yeah. I did this this morning because when you change phones, you have to re- identify yourself on your phone, right? mm. which is fine. So I, I pulled out my passport and my driver's license and I went to my ID and it said your password, your identity is poor, so do these mm. things. I added my passport and it said, we're verifying this. So it checks with the passport office. So what did you change? Your phone? What do you mean? It, when you change phones. When you yeah. change to a okay. new phone, you've got yeah. to re-log into the app and it doesn't yeah. just say it's you. Right. You've got to then re-identify yeah. yourself, yeah. right? So I did a verification with the passport office. Mm. I then did a verification with the New South Wales driver's license. So the the central system that yeah. is the MyGov ID simply went it went to Service New South Wales and said, "Is this real?" Yeah, and it said it yes. Said, yep. And then it went to the passport office. Is this real? Yes. Yeah. And now the MyGov ID does not hold my passport number mm. nor my driver's license number. It simply says. 
He is real. He's him. He does have a passport. He does have a driver's license. Yep. So that if I was to go somewhere that required me to have simply have a passport and driver's yep. license, it could verify that. But to, on the privacy side, and there's been a few people worried, oh, what about privacy? I said, <laughs> my response was, you have a passport issued by the government. You've got a driver's license. You've got a Medicare card. They know who you are. Yeah. So what privacy do you want? So they already know who you are. The best argument so far I've heard was from a scholar, like a university yeah. professor or some sort, um, who said that what about in this sense that, okay, I'm applying for a new energy company. I'm moving address or something, right? Mm. So I'm signing up to Energy Australia. And they go, my go by day, click. And I go, I'm not going to hand you over anything. Click. <clears throat> There has to be some communication between the energy company and my gov to go. It's real. Is he real? Yeah, right? Yeah. Is there a record kept that I'm with Energy? I'm with Energy Australia. So does the government build a profile of me that I'm an Optus customer with Energy Australia and Medibank Private? Like, is there a is there a profile built to no. me? Well, why and, would there need to be? Well, I don't think there needs to be, no. but there does need to be some record kept of that verification. So there needs to be a record kept that but says it, I be, did verify. Yeah. This it, it'll just be a verification. Though. It won't be your details. Like the the way it is now, if you want to sign up to another telco, you got to send them. No, at Energy proof. Australia, it's yeah. just a verification that it's me. But at right. my gov ID, yeah. is there a is there a server that says Trevor yeah. was verified by this company by for yeah. Energy Australia? Maybe, yeah. And then he was verified for this company. So there's a profile. Oh, so you of you're me. saying you're worried that the government will know who you're doing? I'm business not with. worried because I couldn't give a rat's. Yeah. But what, a narc what? will yeah. definitely bring that up. Yeah. I couldn't care And so either, here's though. where you yeah. say, good luck to you. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. Now, there will be businesses. So think about businesses today that say, I'm not accepting cash. Mm. I'm not accepting cash. And they may do that because, A, it's more convenient, it's faster, requires less hardware on the counter, there's less um, fees involved in, in depositing the cash. There's a whole yeah. range of reasons why they may choose not to accept cash. Yeah. If you are a business, like let's say we were setting up, let's say today we said, listen, we've got a great idea for a telco. <laughs> the two blokes telco is going to be 10 bucks a month, unlimited calls, unlimited text, and 25 million gigabytes of data, right? It's going to be amazing. <laughs> <clears throat> but we are not going to do this and have to store data, have data security policies, employ a team of security professionals to maintain that. Yeah. Instead, we're going to set up a telco that has – a simple computer system, IT team, yeah. but there's no need for that security because we're never keeping your data. That's right. Yeah, that's that's, that's the, oversimplified. That's obviously, the, but that's so the this part telco of this. might yeah. might be a you're either in or you're out. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's I think one of the main pillars of the behind this bill is the is for your own protection. Mm. So that your details don't exist on all these company servers, because let's see, we saw what happened with Optus, we saw Latitude. what happened with Medibank. Yep. So it, it, I think, it, in the long term, and this is voluntary, by the way, to begin with. Yes. It'll soon become mandatory in the years to come, probably. Probably, yeah. But and I don't think we should scout around that. I think no, it's. Yeah. I, I think I for. Think, I think for yeah. some things, mm. it will become. I think for. Here's what I think. I think for signing up for a brand new mobile phone plan. You should be forced yeah, to use it yeah. because then we're getting rid of the, the history. And yeah. by the way, and getting rid of the because the, the, because there's still a loophole for like criminals to have these these bogus phones and accounts and stuff. So if you make those sorts of industries mandatory, then that's going to be a bit harder to skate around that yeah. and get get uh, I don't uh, mind. off the books. The fact that you phone. can walk into yeah. an AT and T store in America, get a SIM card, pay fifty dollars, and never show who you are yeah. is still room. I've got a f I've got yeah. a permanent phone number in America. They don't know who I am. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Don't you think that's yeah. unbelievable? Yeah, yeah. Well, we have so, we're so far advanced here. Yep. But here's the other thing that's not even really been discussed: is this doesn't have to be government led. Mm. There can be independent third-party businesses established who will be the verification. So, yeah. um, again, an example I heard today was Mastercard. Right. It might be that you download the Mastercard app because you trust Mastercard yeah. more than you trust the government, and you use Mastercard's digital ID. And Mastercard is the one that is verified by the government to be able to check with the passport, so like check a, with the like thing, a concierge sort of thing, where do, you can do the same thing. Yeah. And it's, it's Mastercard login that I use for my right. website. So you might go to sign up to Optus, and it'll say, "How do you want to verify your ID? Do you want to send us a photo of your passport yeah. and driver's license, or do you want to use Mastercard login or PayPal login? I mean, there might be fifteen yeah. of the bloody things, yeah. right? Yeah. 
So there'll be third parties as well that mm. do this. And they may okay. be the places where there's great innovation and they might simplify it, yep. might use more biometrics than the government. Who knows? Because I was just going to ask, like the, the verification, could would it have to be biometric, fingerprint, face ID? Is that another layer to this? There isn't. I don't believe there's a biometric requirement in yeah. it. I think that's about protecting... You, the app, the app needs to have multi-layer authentication, yeah. and that might be biometric. Yeah. Yeah. But what I found today with the password, and you can, it's available today. MyGov ID is a digital ID mm. that you can use to log into the ATO and all those other things. It's yep. it's a digital yeah. ID. So download the MyGov ID app, and when you add your passport, it will then ask you to hold your phone up quite close, yeah. and it you put your face in an oval, in and circle, it flashes yeah. all these different colors. Yeah. Right? To verify your face. I don't know how face and ID, what it's yeah. doing, but then it sends it off. Yep. Passport office goes, yep, that's him. That's him. And then it goes. So it's, it's a level alongside. I wouldn't say it's different. It's better yeah. than Face ID. It's just a different level. It's a biometric yeah. check that the passport office uses over and above just face matching. Yeah. And that's great. I, I, I'm fully in support of this bill. And uh, it's already passed the Senate, so yep. it's going to it's, it's, it's sailing it's done, through. Yeah. But, uh, it's um, it's going to be controlled by the ACMA, though. Uh, the ACCC, though. Yeah. Well, Why the ACCC? Yeah. I, I Why don't not know. the Office of Information but Security? That also, yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. There'd have to be a fair bit of security around this too, to all, all our information. Well, there are there is anyway. Th- this there is, is the thing. Already, there's no yeah. additional information yeah. being stored to yeah. make this happen. It's just it's just <coughs> connecting the dots and and proving just, proving who you are. Who it's you just are. the government going. We should do this better. Yeah. Well, I think bring it on, a step in the right direction. The less places you have to share your personal details, the better. Yeah. It'll make it easier, faster, and more secure to have this. And please, please, you are going to see videos on social media about people telling you this is mandatory, it's being forced that we have an Australia card, a digital ID. Get in the comments and say, that's a lie. This is not true. Not mandatory. Like it's at the moment. It's that misinformation. And we will get to this misinformation problem with Facebook in a moment. Yeah. But it's that misinformation that really brings things like this down because people start to believe Yeah, I know. They believe the conspiracy. That's they're, it. They're always looking for the 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 glass half empty kind of approach yeah. to this thing. Yeah. I, I think look for anyone who has been affected by any of these data breaches. I think they'll be the they'll be they'll understand the need I for this. Hope so I'm not. I'm just... I don't. I don't think there's a lot of people who they weren't affected by this, and they're yeah. thinking, well, no, I, I don't. They're they don't really have any skin in the game in terms of having their data out there in the first place. Yeah. So I think this is this is going to be I think welcomed with open arms for those customers who were exposed in those breaches. I would welcome your feedback, especially if you have concerns. Because I yeah. let me be clear, this is all fresh and new and, and we're learning as we go. And we might be learning, it's like with uh, the Electric Vehicle podcast last week, talking to Bayhad Jafari from the Electric Vehicle Council. Yep. God, I was very positive about it. Yeah. But I've since learned things about that bill that I need to investigate further. Yeah, yeah. And I think that sometimes you've just got to keep learning about this stuff. So if you have concerns, if you want to pen them to us and let us understand them, I want to understand what the concerns are so that I can better inform myself about them. Absolutely. And hopefully, um, you know, understand how this needs to change or be yeah. supported or be guided. Yeah. I think it's it's us. It's moving with the times. We need yeah. to really be up up front about this and have all the security around it, as well as having that that being able to identify yourself safely and securely, without having to share it with the world. I think that's a step in the right direction. Bring it on, Stephen. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. Two Blokes Talking Tech is supported by our great friends at Arlo, and you know what. The what? Arlo Go 2, I think, is one of my favourite cameras in the room. Where are we going to? Because you can oh, go the anywhere. Go the Go 2. two. You get it? Go yeah. 2. Now, the Go 2 is both a wireless camera and also can fit a SIM card. So it's 4G mm. uh, 4G as well. So Couple, a lot of good use SIMs. cases for this. Yeah. So uh, in, if, if you you could take this with you anywhere. I remember one of my early reviews I did of the, of the Go 2. I actually set this up inside my car. Yeah. So I could watch people walking around my car. Really? And remotely log into it. It was You nerd. It was just one way of trying to do it, you know, like in from inside my car. I think it was after I bought my Tesla and there were so ah, many people. Right. It was before sentry mode and there were a lot of people sticky. <laughs> there were a lot of people rubberneck in my car and I thought I want, I'm I'm looking at you. Man. I'm looking right at <laughs> you. So you could take it. You could even like, you know, you go out on a long weekend, you could take this with you. If you want to sort of add to the security of your yep. trip, you might have a caravan, you might have a boat, 
this is one of those that, that that the security you can take with you, and because it doesn't rely, well, if you've got Wi-Fi available, it'll hook into your Wi-Fi, but if you don't, it can still give you everything you need through the 4G SIM card, so you're easily able to get all those notifications, view the live feeds from the camera as well, and it's all done through the 4G network. So uh, there is room in the camera to put a micro SD card as well as a SIM card, and you're able to record locally to all, all those things, or if you have Arlo Secure, it all heads up into the cloud anyway and store all that as well. So maybe your next holiday, your next camping trip, you might want to consider taking it along the Arlo Go To, but uh, uh, my Arlo Go To is right at the back of my yard, which is slightly out of out of my Wi-Fi range. Yeah. You know, there's a 4G SIM card looking towards my house yeah. from the back from from the backyard. So it, it is gives you opens up the possibilities of where you can place it. In Trevor's case, he's looking at his boat. Uh, he, he's got his, his holiday house. Uh, but it can also be used for maybe on a building site or at if you do have a holiday house, you you can you can put it there as well and then still check in on it and see all those the live feeds and then to get all the notifications. Check it out, Arlo.com. Everything about tech you never wanted to know. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. Did we cover this a few weeks ago when Facebook announced they were going to stop paying the media yes. companies? Yes, and we did. Oh, so we touched on it. Kind of escalated a bit because yeah. there's a bit of hoo-ha and the media companies are still you know, comp- contra tromp fracas about it. Um, yeah. And the government's <laughs> also filthy. And look, the core of this is, and we talked about it before, but Meta, Facebook, has decided to no longer have commercial deals with Australian media organisations. Yeah. And deals they came to after the 2021 great Facebook outage when they just kicked everyone off Facebook, including us. Yeah. And they started paying millions, millions of dollars to media companies yeah. um, in return for them being on Facebook. No, not me. They I didn't, didn't get a, a cent. Did not um, a dollar. And, and what they've announced is they're no longer going to spend that money and they're going to close down the news tab on Facebook. Breaking yeah. news. Facebook had a news tab. Yeah, <laughs> which I never knew, knew existed. Like, well, the news feed used to be just what you saw on Facebook. Yeah. Now, apparently, there was a news tab, which if you went to it, was like going to Google News. Yeah. Where there'd be a bunch so of the like news. it was like an aggregated yes. news page, but, which the companies would put there. So it's like going to Apple <coughs> News on your yeah. phone. So it's, everything's there. The thing is, I don't believe that existed before 2021. So that wasn't mm. the crux of the battle. The battle was because... You know, the Daily Telegraph posted an article and it got shared virally and went really well. It kept people engaged on Facebook and that meant more people saw ads on Facebook and Facebook was making money because the Daily Telegraph had that article on Facebook. And Facebook's argument was, but people are clicking on the article, going to your website, so you make money. I don't know what the issue is. And I'm kind of still in that camp. I don't quite understand how it's an issue. But there's this is going to go on because there's a concern about elections, uh, yeah. about politics generally and about misinformation on Facebook being rife and yeah. how there's a general need. So the government is essentially saying, guys, you are a responsible publisher of wide amounts of information. You must ensure yeah. that there is genuine sort of news yeah. within your platform. That's what the government, I feel, is arguing. Yeah. And Facebook's saying, yeah, they can still post here. Yeah. There's nothing stopping so, them. Yeah. So rather than having the dedicated... <clears throat> The dedicated tab, sort of like a section of Meta, they can just have post. The Daily Telegraph page can continue to post in, articles on the newsfeed. But my argument yeah. back then was, and it still is today, if you've got a million uh, likes on Facebook yeah. and you post an article, it only goes to three percent of those people. Yeah. So, like, can and we they get ask some, you to boost the article or pay me? That's yeah. that's Facebook's motto. Yeah, we won't show your audience unless you pay me. Yeah, and I think that's a joke. So, Stephen, I don't know, yeah. but I think I think the media and the government are coming at this wrong. I think both of them should be saying, guys, you have a massive problem with the amount of money you make from scammers advertising on your platform, yeah. the amount of misinformation that gets spread and not taken down, yeah. the amount of fake ads that get put up and not taken down. For that very reason... You either need to be investing in Australia through journalism and media yeah, to make sure that there is more of that content, Definitely. or lift your friggin' game and sort that out because it's a disgrace. Because yeah, I think you're you're right. The, the like for I've been saying this for year, for a decade and, and longer that Facebook is the internet for people. Yeah, that's that's their internet, especially the older generation. Exactly I look at my right. mum and Gary, and yeah. it's like they just they just and look so, at Facebook. 
they tend to see stuff on there that might not be 100% true and they, they assume it's true. And, and there's, so there's the risk now of you remove the news, it's going to be filled by something else. Yeah. And the risk that we have now is that what it takes its place is misinformation, inaccuracies that people assume is correct on, 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 on Meta, on Facebook. Now, the problem, I remember when, when we all got kicked off the platform, it was uh, the, the government went into bat for Australian news outlets and sort of proved the point that, you know, Facebook is, they're benefiting from yep. those, from having that quality of content on their platform. Yeah. So they're, the, the information they're gathering, the data they're gathering from people looking at these articles on their platform is they're benefiting greatly from that platform. Mm. It's what brings people to the platform. Yeah. So it'll be like, you know, a core stadium not not wanting to pay Souths and other teams playing on their in their stadium. So Souths play in their stadium, they're going to attract fans. Who then buy who mo- then buy, buy merch, pies, pies, do and stuff not and then make a core money. Yeah. So it's yeah, so big. you're saying that uh, yeah. in this in so that, in that the, example, so Meta is the stadium. Meta is the stadium. And news, and news, news are the com teams. and Daily Telegraph and yeah. Nine are the teams, That's and it. the public are still the public. Public and the, is still the and, crowd, and the the meat pies are the ads. Correct. So, I think you got you got to pay the dues. You got to pay your dues. Now, uh, it, there's a massive problem now because there's a lot of, you know, I know Channel Nine's not going to go out of business, but there's a lot of regional newspapers well, and there's a lot mate, of these it's smaller a big, it's news a big outlets. hit on their budgets. Though. Absolutely, they were getting, like, yeah, it millions was reported of dollars, they were yeah. getting like five to seven to ten million dollars. So mate, those yeah. that that money was in newsrooms. So yeah. there will be cuts in newsrooms, I believe. I mean, well, I haven't seen that's, anything. That, but that's the other. That's the other side of this that we that we haven't really delved into too deeply. But the the whole social effect of this is is also for the billions of people who. And, and this is to be clear. This is in the United States and Australia are the two big markets where the news tabs are going to disappear. Yeah, I think it's already happened in Canada. Well, Canada is in. Um, yeah is in real fight mode and has been for some yeah. time. Like, they're in 2021 mode, like yeah. us. So so what's the government going to do? Do you reckon his elbow going to go into bat? Are they going to, like, I can remember at the time it was, um, what's his name? It was uh, Josh Josh Frydenberg who yeah. went in, up against Mark Zuckerberg yes. and fought for this deal. And essentially won. Yeah. Now, I think if I remember correctly, what the government can do is deem Facebook to be a digital platform yeah, well, and it is. No, but they can de- deem it under legislation. Right. And by doing that, force mediation between the parties. Uh, okay? okay. Here's my question. When do we get a seat at the table? Yeah. Well, the, the, I think there was someone talking on TV today uh, about how these small, these smaller, remember I was telling you about the, the regionals and those yeah. smaller outlets going to take a massive hit. And the independents like myself and you, an EFTM tech guide, who've never got a dollar, Business as usual for us. Yeah. Are we going to benefit? You reckon? Are we going to see a, a more people looking at us instead of these other big outlets, or no. is, is there going to be? Because those other big outlets, they're not going to stop publishing on. Of on course Facebook. not. So this is, but they can't risk it. But but do you reckon though that the best move for them is to not publish on Facebook and see the difference? Because again, okay, we'll use the stadium analogy, right? So say South say. I'm not going to come to your stadium ever again. Yeah. So every South so fan is not going to go. So what a stadium does is go, we'll yeah. find something else to put on yeah. and hope the uh, hope that people turn up. That's right. So see if rugby it would need to happen on a genuine mass scale. I'm surprised that all the outlets haven't got together and said, what are we going to do? Oh, I'm sure they have. What have they got to lose? I'm sure they are. You reckon? Okay. Well, I hope so because I think they are. imagine if seven talked see, to, talk to oh, nine. Oh, we've talked about you know? this. I mean, you're still active on Twitter. Yeah. I just, mate, it was. Mate, I, I just post stories on Twitter and retweet my own stuff. I understand stuff. that. But like, I did the I numbers. Do. There is like, there yeah. is not enough traffic to justify even posting them on there. Yeah. Like, I don't need, we automatically share them on EFTM, but I don't it's even habit. need, I don't even, <laughs> no, but that's just the, that's software, that's software back end. There's no yeah. additional um, effort. Yeah. In ticking the in ticking the Twitter button, right? Yeah. Whereas I don't log in Trevor Long and reshare them or anything because there is zero traffic I was benefit. Why you don't have been retweeting me? Because I don't, mate. I don't <laughs> log on. I don't look at it. Right? I name drop you in all my posts. Thanks, though, mate, when, I, when we're together, you know, I really appreciate it. But yeah. I'm never going to reshare it, even unless on I come back. I name drop you on Threads too. No, I just I, don't. I'm not a big over. What do they call it? Re- reshare. What re-share. do they call it? Reshare. I'm more of a. I'm not a big resharer on Threads. I just uh, like to post thoughts and things. I don't make it okay. a business platform broadly. So you don't share your stories <clears throat> on Threads? 
Uh, rarely. Sometimes I share it is, sometimes everything I don't. on threads. I share everything on threads, Twitter, Facebook. I know, but mate, I've spent both personal and and tech I've guide. spent a lot of time analysing the numbers. Yeah, and there's no benefit to it. Yep, there's no benefit. So I think what would happen is if they analyse the numbers, there's it's it's a bigger risk. So you're saying social media is doing nothing for your readership? No, I'm saying Twitter, Twitter and Threads don't Facebook, contribute though? huge amounts. Facebook, I wouldn't leave. Would be the best of them. No, no, WhatsApp's probably best. Instagram uh-huh. second, and and Facebook third. Broadly. Broadly. Yeah, it yeah. depends. Like if it's a Foxtel article, it goes nuts. An NBN article goes nuts on Facebook because yeah, yeah, yeah. it gets shared, right? Yeah, of course. So what I'm saying is the Daily Telegraph would know better than us what how, yeah. what the numbers of link clicks yeah. is from Facebook, and they're not prepared to lose that number. Yeah. So they're not prepared to shut down on a particular not. day. Of course not. And if they if the industry did a big, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, shutdown, it can't be a day because that's not going to be enough time for no. Facebook to, to see the difference. It has mm. to be a week or a month. It's got to move the needle. It's got to be able to them to show that without us. It's got to be people going, there's no one coming to the game. What's happening? Yeah. If the top well, I'm seeing all this rubbish. If the top teams aren't playing, no one's going to come to the stadium. That said, yeah. if news.com, like, I, I'm, I'm going to unfollow them on, um, on Facebook because I'm sick of the clickbait. So clickbaity. Mate, honestly. All of them are, though, on Facebook. Yeah, Daily I, Mail. It's just All of them. That's what it's become. Yeah. So are we, are we now going to not get that? <laughs> Is that I hope so. <laughs> then I agree with that bit. But, yeah, there's room, always room for quality journalism. Yeah, I hope so. That, that, that benefits the reader. Yeah. In this case, the Facebook user. And oh, the risk we face is itself. that in a, in a vacuum, you take it away, something else will fill the vacuum. There's something and else will come in. It could be other other yeah. other crap in there. Yeah, <laughs> people's faces are triangles and stuff. <laughs> you know, I know, <laughs> I know what you mean. So you don't know what you're going to get, and the the. A lot of people who, as I said, th- Facebook is their world. I that, genuinely can't predict how this is going to play out. Yeah, I don't think Facebook will go nuclear again. I don't no. think they'll they'll pull that. Too much you backlash. Mean pull last everyone time. off the yeah. pla- They won't. Why pull, would they? Well, they're not just paying, because that was their argument last time. They're not paying me a dollar. Yeah, that was their well, argument. And they last still time. pulled me off the platform. But see, and then when they came, brought me back, they didn't give me anything. If if the government deems them to be a digital platform, do they pull everyone off again? And then say at mediation, it's fine. We've we've removed them all, so there's no issue here. Uh. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who mean you mean Facebook removed them? Facebook's or? Re- Facebook's uh. forced to sit down at mediation. Yeah. They press a button and remove all the news sites. Yeah. And then they sit down. And they go. They're not on our platform. So we're we're a platform that does other things. We don't do news. We do social commentary. Yeah, but what else is going to be? What else is <coughs> Facebook going to be? Is it, it? I know Facebook is. People's initial conspiracy theories and, and no, videos that but, were on TikTok three weeks and ago. You can see your friends' photos and stuff like that, right? I think that, that social part of it we've forgotten about. But the other crap that's there, ads that are a lot of them is it's it's Mate, dead scam scam stuff, yes. right? Which they're making You're gonna money see more that's what of I'm that saying. We're going to see more Why of that. Why isn't the government pushing that line? Yeah, I agree, mate. I think that if they're going to be, if they're going to act so <coughs> high and mighty hit, and not want hit news, Facebook hard, yeah. The media should join together and say we are demanding and they can push and they can basically force the government to make yeah, a stand. Yeah. And we can force them to f- have new ad standards. Ad standards is what's yes, needed here. I agree. New advertising yeah. standards, which the industry would also need to oblige by. But don't you so think that's it's a bit challenging. Hip- it's a bit hypocritical <clears throat> where Facebook saying we're going to get rid of news, which is like quality journalism. They're thinking we don't need that. But they're going to still have ads for stuff that, a lot, a high percentage of them are scams, mate. It's and that's that's what's scams. making the money. So they they're gonna they're gonna not get rid of the quality, but keep the crap there. That's that's the problem with Meta mm. is that they mm. are making money off scams, and this is why the narrative yeah. shouldn't be about it news. Should, it should it change should be about on. their yeah. impact on Australians yeah. and the money they're costing Australians in scams, yeah. the little attention they're paying to advertising on the platform. The simplicity with which someone can – I saw one the other day. It was some poor woman with a you know arts and crafts Facebook page shop or something who'd yeah. clearly been hacked two years ago because she yeah. hadn't posted anything about her shop on her page for two years. But her page was advertising just scam rubbish, right? Yeah. Because what hackers do 
is they they take over your page, you know, yeah. my arts and Log, crafts. Yeah, get rid of, change your Because you didn't have yeah. two-factor authentication. They kick you off as admin and then they use your authorised ad account because you've, you've run an ad, you boosted something once. Yeah. They change the credit card. They'll, they'll happily use their own cards or whatever. Yeah. They'll give them yours for a bit and then they run ads. Yeah. It's only twenty, thirty, fifty dollars, but they run ads and lots of them. You know, yeah. and they get they scam people out of millions of bloody dollars. I think that uh, <coughs> if they want to play hardball, we can play hardball with them. The government has to have that attitude. Where if you want to play hardball and do this, then we're going to come at you because we want to protect Australians from getting scammed on your platform. So if you want to if you want to play at that game, two can play at that game. They should say. Don't you think it's, so? It's ad standards they yeah. need to hammer on straight away. Yeah. <clears throat> because, and it's interesting, I did do a, a lot of investigating into this because I, I, my theory was that there was a regulation or ad standard that prevented Channel 9 from running an ad for a scammer. Yep. There's actually not. Right. There's just morals. Right. Right. So and when you standards. when you go to run an ad on 2GB or Channel 9, yep. someone looks at it, someone listens to it and goes, and yeah. they go, hang on a minute. <laughs> Yeah. That doesn't seem right. Yeah. Gina Reinhardt, what's what? That yeah. doesn't seem right, right? <laughs> yeah. So there's Twiggy someone Forrest? that goes, hang on a minute, yeah. that's not right, and yeah. they they prevent it from happening. There's no actual written standard. There's standards that say you can't show child pornography, you can't yeah. show nudity at different times, you can't do advertising of gambling and alcohol, liquor and all that kind of stuff. There's standards yeah. around broad principles of gambling right. and liquor, um, and and criminality. But there's actually nothing that says you've got to check the ads before they go to air. Like, yeah. there's actually not a lot of that. So I worry that the, the the industry, the media industry, doesn't want to go down that path because it might impose some standards on them digitally. So yeah. you've got to remember that at the bottom of, I don't know, the Daily Mail, you scroll all the way down, there's all these friggin' links yeah. for, that are actually ads for crappy websites that are just, you know, Taboola yeah, and product, all that kind of stuff. And stuff yeah. And there's, mate, most of those are scams as well. Yeah. And so these companies do have a foot in that game. Mm. Like I looked at some websites that I, I'm a f broadly affiliated with and I scrolled down and I went, that's just, I hate those ads. Remember we yeah. talked about with Gizmodo once? It was like, mm. man, good content. And then it's just all rubbish mm. on the ads and stuff because they don't control what those ads are. Yeah. They're programmatically bought by yeah. the companies that run those ads. Is, is uh, Twiggy Forest case still going on yep. against them? Yeah. yeah, and has Gina Reinhart taken him to court too? I don't not? think she's taken him to court. She's just called yeah. him out publicly. Because yeah. Um, yeah, so I think Dick Smith did the same thing. Was it Dick Smith? Dick's pretty Someone unhappy else? as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, good luck to them. I hope they get a win because it'll it'll show that being a digital platform, you have to have some sort of standards there. Oh, it's a tough. And, win, and mate. it's it's like you, it can't be lowest common denominator stuff because you know that that's gonna. Yeah, social media, the in, in Meta in in particular, is pretty influential in how in shaping people's thoughts and shaping people's mm. opinions. Yeah, and with an election coming up in the US this year and in in Australia next year, it's something I think there needs to be something done sooner rather than later. Yeah, we've got to still be having to maintain some standards for Australian users of the platform yeah. and. We've said it a million times. We're the product because we're the looking at it. They're gathering our data. Yeah. We're the product. We deserve a st high standard of information. Yeah. So I they just should wonder, have the news wonder there. who drives that because I, I think the media might have the wrong mindset about it. I don't think they're thinking it as a holistic Mate, they've problem. They've got to band together. I think and they're say, just trying right. to get back their millions. That's a big hole in a budget, isn't it? It is massive, yeah, mate. That's huge. I'm is really nine worried. affected? Nine? I believe so, yeah. yeah well, I mean, I just read the articles. I don't know anything, obviously. Yeah, I'm right. Just, so I'm just not be one of the biggest news companies nine in Australia. Nine news and seven, yeah. you know, they're the them, biggest ones. Like tens of millions of dollars. Whoa. And someone and someone quoted the percentage of their budget. It's like percentages of their budget. Whoa. <clears throat> and so yeah. when you then narrow that down to the newsroom, yeah, right. it would be a chunk of their newsroom budgets. You know, think about some of the things that, like Seven. I know they did that. Started doing that Facebook Livey late ninety thing, and then I think that became a TV show. And it's like if they lose all that money, like that would be a lot of employees. Absolutely, yeah. How so, long? How long has it been going on? Three <coughs> years. Three well, years. Well, it was two thousand and one that the hell went down, didn't it? No, twenty twenty one. You mean twenty twenty one? Yeah. Yeah. So it's been three years. So yeah. uh, they must have come to those arrangements so the deals quickly that after year, that. So it's two and a half years, you could say. There must have been three coming years. Coming to three years. Well, it was February 21, wasn't it? It was, yeah. So if it's coming up, April the 1st was, or April was yeah. three, was a, an anniversary of a contract. Uh, I reckon it was April. Okay, I bet you so any money all the contracts started in April. Yeah, it was three-year contracts. Ended, ended this week. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I bet you all the media didn't think it was 
Do you not reckon? Do is this a this um, is this a deliberate? Well, they just want out. They just don't want to pay them anything. Yeah. Or is this a you move think this is to, a bargaining? Yeah. Is this like a, they want to sharpen the pencil a little bit? Well, if they is want to sharpen the pencil move? a little bit, they would have gone back and said, "Listen, we're going to cut it by twenty percent because it's we don't see the benefit in it, but we appreciate that it needs to happen." Yeah. And that would have been a because a, a story, but it wouldn't have got much support anyway because you're still getting millions, right? Mm. But so look, look how they started this whole thing. They just took everyone off the platform. Yeah, but I think so. also it's a cut cut it off at the neck because they don't want this to be a global problem. They don't want to have to yeah. spend these millions in every country in the world as they slowly adopt the same yeah, right. things that Australia have adopted. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So Australia was this pioneer in a sense. Yeah. But that also created a rod for our own backs because so many countries followed. Yeah. That see in Canada they didn't do the deals because they went. Listen, we're not doing that here as well. Uh, and then you imagine they have to do these deals in America. The American media would be well, Americans. They're part of this. The us in Australia. That's what, no longer a news tab. They, they don't want the news tab because they yeah. don't want to have to spend this money. Wow. They don't want it in all the different countries. So some sort of legis legislative change needs to happen. Oh. But my advice to all of the members of Parliament watching um, is make it about. What Facebook's responsibility to Australians is? Yeah. You want right? to you want to get it's out. It's as much yeah. about uh, spreading f factual news and information yeah. as it is all of the information on the platform being such. Yeah. You know, you talk about like remember Elon Musk in that interview with Don Lemon said that Don Lemon showed him an anti-Semitic tweet and he said, but we didn't promote that. And yeah. Don Lemon goes, but you had it on your platform. And he goes, yes, but we didn't promote it. It didn't get. No one saw it. Didn't it didn't get into the algorithm. No one saw it. He goes, yes, but that's not the point. You still had it there. Yeah. Now, I am a bit on Elon's side there. It's like, mate, we can't watch everything. Yeah. But you know what? Like, there's a we certain, caught it. That yeah. bloke we talked about earlier, bring his content and just wave it back. Like, let's not show yeah. that to anyone. I don't care how many times they've commented. Yeah. Just stop showing it because it's rubbish. Yeah. He's a lunatic. Yeah. So That's fair. We've got to yeah. wind those things back, wind yeah. those dials back. The problem for Facebook is when you wind those dials back, people – engage less with the platform and go elsewhere like TikTok and start using that instead and that's negative for their business. So, mate, yeah, the solution is very difficult. You here. mentioned Elon Musk. <clears throat> Do you reckon he might be seeing this as an opportunity for Twitter or X or whatever you call it now? In what sense? He's so not going to spend make money. It, making, a news, making deals for news, get more eyeballs on, He's on X. He's not going to spend money on you don't reckon? news, no. Something's better than nothing. It'd be smart, but he's not a smart yeah. – he's not actually a smart businessman. Yeah. It would be smart to go, you know what, if it's going to cost me $50 million in it, because let's say Facebook was spending 70 yeah. what if I spent 50 and got all these companies to prioritise and essentially be exclusive to, to X? Mate, that would be, that'd be a that'd be huge. game. That would be a big could, deal. It could bring me back. Yeah, that would be a big deal. Yeah. And that way it would, it would kind of anoint Twitter, X, as the place where you get the facts, the, yeah. where you get the real news. But that's not going to happen because freedom of speech means he wants everything to be there and it's going to contain yeah, no, a bunch of rubbish if, as well. If he can say that all the uh, the major news outlets are now posting we can say that X. now. He can say that now. Yeah, I suppose. But they still are. It's they already authorized. are. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Impossible. Yeah, but we, but will nine now? Will nine still share content to Facebook? I or don't is it, speak are they done for nine. Now? I can't speak are for they nine. Done? I don't do you know. think they should? I think they. Because be if mad they to do, stop. if they did. Facebook will say, well, you're still doing it. You're still posting. That's the thing. As we said earlier, the real thing they have to do is prove that they're willing to stop. Pull everything off. You know what? You know, do what Facebook did to them. Take everything off. I don't think Facebook would have. Would that an even impact. have an effect? No. You don't reckon all the major news outlets, all those stories, all that news, all that content. That people would just start sharing take it off British the news and the BBC. Like People will just use other things as news. Mm. That's the problem. So it's it's as it's much too big a risk. It's as much on Australian Facebook users to support these these. In the same sites. way that I made that commitment when the news stuff all happened, I went, I'm going to sign up and be a subscriber to all yeah. the news platforms. Yeah, and I still am. Yeah, I still pay them all yep. every month for yeah. their digital services. Don't use them all very much, but I I think it's important to support it. But n not everyone's doing that. No, so they're not getting the millions that way, are they? No. Because everyone expects us to read it. I know I click on a lot of news articles on Facebook and 90% and of it is behind a paywall. Right. So What are you reading? Oh, you know, Daily Telegraph, Herald and all that sort of thing. You give my login. Okay. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's it's their sharing. Sheepskate. Their, um, but yeah, it's not letting you get through. Yeah. 
if you don't if you don't want to pay. So we shall yeah. watch with interest to yeah. see what the end happens here. I, I I couldn't even be I wouldn't bet if there was a sports bet market. I wouldn't bet. But I can't imagine a world. By the way, I won good money on the Panthers the other day beating the Roosters. Yeah. How are the Panthers paying two dollars fifty? Wow, against the Roosters. How does that happen? That's wild. Just because they job. lost Cleary. Good job. Nailed it. Joel yeah. Kane had the great intro before the game. Yeah. Made me bet. So gambling works. Uh, advertising for gambling works. <laughs> you heard it here first. Two Blokes Talking Tech. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech with Trevor Long and Stephen Fennec. We do it all thanks to the great people at Netgear. If you need Wi-Fi in your home, if you're looking to really up the game at your home, gaming or streaming, you've got to consider a great Wi-Fi network. That router that came from your uh, internet provider, not not the best. It's not going to do the best job. Get an Orbi mesh Wi-Fi system to ensure you've got Wi-Fi through your whole home. I call it a dome of Wi-Fi over your whole home once you connect to the Orbi router and a satellite or two through your home. It means that your existing internet connection can be enhanced with great Wi-Fi because there's no point having great internet connection. You're paying for 500, 1,000 megabits per second if you've got a crappy little Wi-Fi modem. So get yourself a decent Orbi mesh system to ensure you're getting good speed, good coverage everywhere in your home. That's what you get with Netgear Orbi. Check it out at netgear.com.au. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech with Trevor Long and Stephen Fennec. Stephen, uh, we've both reviewed the Uniden Dash View 60. Yep. Uh, I had the 60 60R. R. Yeah. Um, I did too, but I only, only looked. The, I only installed the front camera. So yeah. as a front camera only, it's a 5K resolution. Yeah. When you connect the rear camera, it becomes 4K front, 2K back. Yeah. Um, because obviously there's only so much bandwidth that can store in it. Now, as a front camera, it was quite fascinating to me because it's quite a wide angle. And yeah. then when you – and I did this. I, I put a video up of the different clips. When you then connect the rear camera, it becomes more of a kind of 16 by 9 standard shot, but you don't get quite the width in the yep. view uh, with the with just the 4K front yep. resolution. Yeah, I put together it's still 4K too. resolution. Solid. And looks brilliant. The picture quality is – Yeah, it's great. Solidly – one of the top three I've, I've ever and, used. And let's face it, you got a dash cam is not because it looks pretty in your car, it's because it can shoot good video. No, I've got mirrors for that. Quality <laughs> quality videos and the resolution adds to that too. So you, it, I, I, I put together some clips uh, in my story, shot both daytime in bright weather, nighttime, uh, and just to show that in all of those scenarios, the, the, the Sony Starva sensor can really handle all kinds yeah, of conditions. Yeah, the dynamic range in that yeah. bright. When you got a bright yeah. sun in the sky, I found yeah. that the bright sun in the sky, it was it was like it was a different shot, the, yeah. the bottom part of the road and the and the houses around because they were just perfectly clear. Yeah. It did a really good job of creating that wide dynamic range so that yeah. that sun just glare wasn't there in the in the picture. It was like, very oh, well done. Oh, we've both used our, our other dash cams, yep. inferior dash cams to this one. And you often see t- cases where you're coming out of a tunnel or out of a dark part and then you're suddenly in the, out of the shadow into bright sunlight mm. and the whole image just washes out. Yep. And for a few seconds you see nothing. Yeah. Because uh, it's it just the, the sensor can't handle that change. So that, that's probably the strongest feature of the unit in is the fact that you've got that quality no matter whether it's day, night, light, dark, uh, whatever the conditions. And I even I, – I remember pausing – the video, and then zooming in to, to read number plates. Even at night, even in the night videos, I zoomed in, could clearly read number plates by the side of the road, street signs, had all the detail on it. So embedded in the in the video is the, locate, the GPS location, the speed in which you're traveling, and the speed as the video plays – the speed changes as well. If you go faster, it's, it's, it shows you going faster. And then you also the direction of travel as well. So all that info. And you know what? Could be useful for an insurance claim, yeah, yeah. police report. You might contest a fine. I was thinking if you get fined doing something, yeah. think there's no way that was a red light or yeah. there's no way I was going that fast. Then that's a, re- a record and of your travel. There's no there's no insurance company that will give you a better premium because you've got a dash cam. But no. think of it this way: it's often your word against someone else's. So yeah. if you've simply got something that says sure, but can we just all look at this for a minute, and then that's going to yeah. help in that conversation with your insurer because it's really your insurer and the other insurer that have the argument, and yeah. they're just going to have that conversation with your evidence. The thing I was actually most impressed with was pairing your phone. 
for the app because mm. you don't have to know the Wi-Fi address and the Wi-Fi password. It just pops up and says, "Yeah, you know, here's the Uniden camera. You're, Click a button and it automatically yeah. paired within the app. It was so good. If you have wireless CarPlay, it could be a little bit of a, a, bull, a bit of an exercise right. because – the CarPlay tends to take over the Wi-Fi. Even well, yeah, when it needs the Wi-Fi. You connect, yep. you connect it, and then two seconds later, it goes, nah, I'm here. You're not. N-. Yeah, right. So what I found, I had to, I went into my settings uh, in my, on my iPhone, and the particular vehicle I was driving that day, I turned the CarPlay off. Yes. And then got into it, downloaded my videos. Yeah. Videos downloaded pretty quick too. Yeah. Because I remember I on downloaded, a previous yeah, dash view, I didn't yeah. feel like I was getting the same speed. Yeah. The downloads were very quick. I downloaded, I think, nine videos yeah. and it was took, I reckon, probably two two minutes, three minutes to do all, like nine full full resolution yeah. videos. Well, that was pretty reasonable. I thought it was a bit longer yeah. than that, but it was, it was yeah. definitely great. It yeah. was definitely snappy. I thought, the only thing I couldn't find in the app, this is really weird, was I couldn't name the car like in, in my other ones, I normally put the number plate yeah. or just name the car. Couldn't find a way to embed the yeah. name of my car in the in the dash cam uh, footage. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> you got to remember too, this has GPS, uh, so it gives you red light warnings as well. Yep. Speed camera speed warnings. Speed camera warnings. Red light cameras. Uh, also has um, the one one thing in the app. The app, when, when you're looking at the videos to download, hmm. it was very hard to see the videos you'd selected. Depending That's on the, true, the yeah. color of the, like if you say it's a, like a blue sky, you can't quite see the tick in the top right hand corner. Yeah, yeah. It needs to be a bit clearer. So you do think, have I selected that? You're looking at it again. Um, but also, yeah, the, the GPS, that, that was a big, I think it was a, the, a helpful because I was been driving this, the, 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 been driving the Ford, the, the marquee, that's what I put the, the dash cam yeah. in. And it was, I was driving in areas I didn't know very well. And when it told me oh, I had red light camera ahead and speed camera ahead, I'm mm. thinking, oh, thanks for the heads up. Nice work. Thanks so uh, much. Yeah, save me, save me some money. Yeah, right. Yeah. And look, for 500 bucks, yeah. you get the 5K front and rear option, so 4K front, 2K rear. Yeah. Like for 500 bucks? Yeah, it's pretty good. They're pretty other, bloody other good. Other brands charge twice as much. Also, for that sort my of other quality. favorite thing was we finally evolved into a new connectivity where this is USB C. And as a front only camera, USB-C direct into the camera. But when you're using the rear, what it's got is it's got this kind of splitter cable. So it's a USB-C from the camera and it splits out into a, a proprietary connection for the rear camera and a female USB so the power just goes in there. Yeah. So it's a really nifty, simple way of yeah. doing it. Whereas normally it used to be, even with the last Dash View models, it was, um, I think it was micro USB into the camera and then there was a small proprietary plug in the camera so you'd put the rear camera mm. plugged into the front whereas yes. this is kind of much easier you've only got one just thing USB-C, yeah, just yeah. USB-C in the that's side it. of the camera and that's it because I'm looking at going where the hell am I going to plug the, the uh-huh. where am I going to plug the rear camera in but yes. actually yeah, yeah. it was a splitter cable very we should also rubber. mention too the uh, smart parking mode yeah because uh, it can work when the car is turned off yeah if you hardwire it, rec- it. Rec- records in 60 second blocks so um for those cases where someone hits your car in the car park or uh, if someone might back into your car and not, not leave a note, and look, you I'll, got pretty good resolution. I'd highly it recommend just getting a professional to install yeah. it because it means that you can do the hard wiring into the fuse box and get that parking do mode. It all. But I did do a video with Uniden last year. It's on YouTube to how to install a front dash cam. It's bloody easy to conceal the cable and not have it dangling around. Please don't do that. It looks horrible. Put it out of the way. Um, the the dash view models are my favourite because they don't have a screen. There are uni that have a yeah. screen and can show you things so like speed and stuff. Yeah. But it's it's the it's I the put barrel mine model in behind the mirror, so there's space there. It doesn't need to be something from you the, see from the driver's seat. I could barely see it. Yeah, yeah. Main thing is, and a tip for the from the guy that actually installed mine in the in the Kia. Um, he had to show me where he was putting because he said, "Mate, it's going to look like it's a bit low here, but oh. it needs to be because the wipers don't go." Like there's about three or four centimetres at the top of the dash of the windscreen where the wipers Uh, don't go because it's a huge window, right? right. And he said, so if I put it right at the top, you're going to have a dirty windscreen. So I put it just down here. It'll be within the wipe mode and so you've always Ah, got clarity. So it's always looking through the clear part of the windscreen. I would not have thought of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, And he did the same on the back and I thought, that's nifty, mate. That works. That works. Uniden Dash View 60 Plus 60R. Um, full review, techguide.com.au and eftm.com. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. It's finally happened. I want to, I want to, I want to say this. It's finally happened. <laughs> this is it's a show, a show about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that is very clever, Trev. Now, people are thinking, what the hell is this idiot talking about? Oh, thanks, mate. Let me explain. Cheers. Yep. The Nothing Phone. 
Yes. Which we've seen in the US for what, two years? It's been around Three a little years. while. Yeah, it got quite, it got a quite good cult a following cu- yeah, when they released that. Yeah, um, yeah. headphones, like transparent yes. electronic Was that head- before the phone they I released? I think it that? was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it got a lot of hype. Yes. Cultish like lot hype, which well, I think is fine. The news is that JB Hi Fi will release the Nothing Phone 2, the second version, here in Australia, and they start. At nine hundred and ninety nine bucks, they're going to be released on April eleven. Yep. So we're talking now. The, the the signature of the Nothing Phone is the this rear panel mm. that actually has like LED lights scattered around it, so right. you can actually set different light modes. Say you call me, the uh-huh. lights will do something. If my wife calls my, me, the lights do something else. You call else. me, it'll go to voicemail. Yes. <laughs> and it also, it's running Android, yeah? yeah? Android, but it's got this... It's definitely not running iOS. Yeah, it's uh, it's got this really nice user interface though as well. Yeah, no, yeah. they've done a very nice skin on Android. Yeah. I think I'm most excited about the the, the, the Nothing Phone 2A because it's a $599 phone. And by the way, JB's gone all in here. They're bringing out different SKUs, which means different storage amounts. Five twenty nine for the one twenty eight gig, yep. um, in white or black. So both of the size. Um, oh, so you got the, the small ones too. Yeah. Are they smaller screens or just lower lower res, um, oh, storage? Smaller I, screens too. I think they're smaller everything. Yeah, so smaller no, six everything. no six point seven inch on the on the two A. Yeah, wow. It's a six point seven inch, one hundred and twenty hertz, thirteen hundred nit. 50 megapixel camera with optical wow. image stabilization and a 5,000 mega me, milliamp hour battery with 45 watt fast charging. Why would you want anything more than the $599, $529 yeah. model? So what does the other one of the other ones give you? Let, let's look at the. You look at the 999. I'll look at the 1099 one. Well, that's just a different storage capacity. So yeah, right. so the 999 is still, still 6.7. 6.7 adaptive OLED. restriction. OLED. Yeah. OLED, 600 nits of peak brightness, so brighter. 1,600 nits 1,600 of peak over, brightness. over 1,300 for the last 50 megapixel main camera. Smaller battery. 4,700 battery. Smaller mm. than the 2A. 45 watt fast charging. I reckon the 2A is going to be the peak of the bunch. Yeah. But they do, they smartly show on their screenshots a very Apple-like widget display, even though yeah. it's very Android. Of course. I think it looks the way a lot of people have arranged their iPhones when widgets came. Even my wife has these funky looking colored widgets really? and stuff. I think that is aimed entirely at iPhone users because so it looks like a bloody iPhone as well. Just getting back to the 2A, right? You've got yep. a 6.7 AMOLED display, not yep. OLED. Pretty good anyway. Obviously, anyone. OLED is better. Yeah. Still 120 hertz. Yes. Still 1300 nits yeah, bright. 300 less. Still 50 megapixel main camera. With image stabilization. With a bigger battery. Same 45 watt fast charging, and it's half the price. It obviously has a different processor. Ooh. I would say it's got yeah, a maybe a an different... Exynos or something, not a Snapdragon. Let's uh, have a look here. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it is powered by. It doesn't say. Hang on, read more specs. Here we go. This is great podcast. It's it? awesome. Really top uh, stuff. It mate. is well a MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Pro on the on the A, whereas the two is a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen One, which is kind of your Samsung S24 yes. level processor. Yeah, so it's right. processor. Okay. It's the the difference is processor, which most people won't notice. I'm telling and you, the two A is going to be picky. The design is slightly different on the back. I don't think you get as many lights on the back of the two A. Two A, no. The 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 two uh, the the is the two A five G. Yeah, it is five G. Yeah. Um, you do get more lights and paraphernalia. With I got to tell you, I like the look of the the two A. I like the what cameras color being you get? in the middle. White every day of the week. White. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I don't mind the white one. I'd get white as well. Yeah. Do you reckon they'll send us one to review or what? I, I have no doubt there'll be something happening because this is ex, this is exciting. Who's them. doing the PR for them? <clears throat> no idea. Should we have to? Should we make some phone calls? Or Someone what? at nothing, I think. I don't even think they were in <laughs> Australia, to be honest. <clears throat> yeah, and it's, um, it's only from JB Hi-Fi. Is it going to be sold anywhere else? At this point, it's exclusive. Or well, they don't say exclusive, but at this point, it's right. uh, JB Hi-Fi. Yeah. Wow. Because um, it has been released in the US and Europe, I'm going to say. Yeah. It's it's basically been a global phone, but uh, yep. you know here we are now with uh, J- and I think this is smart by JB's because see JB knows their market. They know they're selling not yeah. bad in in the Motorola's, the Oppos, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They know how much money's in that market. They also know how well they can because here's the thing: this is JB. They'd be doing a good margin on it, mm. guarantee you. I reckon they will bring people from the A series and potentially the S series Samsung. They they yeah. will have the power to build market for this. Do they reckon Just they're at retail a, level, because I do know that Samsung and Oppo they do have like oh. quite a bit of space at JB Hi-Fi. <laughs> I just realised. What? I just 
Did you just buy one? No, no. The email that I got about yeah. nothing. Yeah. I just went, oh, who's doing the PR? Co-founder and chief marketing officer. <laughs> of nothing. Yeah. The dude I sent me the email was the co-founder. Wow. I'm like, okay, mate. Cheers, brother. I sh- <laughs> should have checked. There we go. Nothing partners with, oh, uh, there we go. CEO and co-founder. Is yeah. it Emmanuel? Yeah. There you go. What a top bloke. I'm going to reply to his email. Oh, hang on. No, stop. CEO and co-founder of the PR mob. Ah, oh, damn. Yeah. I'm going to reply to him right now. And so where's me, where's me phone, Where's mate? me phone, brother? Where's me phone? Uh, Fastlane, are they? Yeah, they represent a whole bunch of brands. Oh. Um, it appears. Or their website is entirely in Chinese. <laughs> um, I'm going to convert it with Google. Another great helping and innovative brands globalize. Oh, so it's okay. a Chinese brand, nothing. It, well, the company that contacted us. Oh, sorry. Fast lane. Okay. Is, yeah. I'm going to ask for a review unit. Okay, Have you, you already do done that, that or what? Mate, I'm all over it. Are you kidding? <laughs> Who do you think you're talking about? Okay. Nothing is a British consumer electronics company based in London, founded by Carl Pei, the co founder of Chinese smartphone maker OnePlus. Oh. Investors include uh, Tony Fidel of iPod. What does that mean? Twitch. Tony Fidel, one of the designers of iPod. It's just right. That's a really bad statement of iPod. It should say. Of iPod. Designer. IPod it should designer. say designer of iPod. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, co founder Kevin Lynn, Reddit CEO, a Twitch co founder, Reddit CEO. So basically, some, oh, and YouTube personality Casey Neistat. Oh. No wonder he did some stuff for it. Um, yeah, so British. Wow. But, but Chinese, let's be honest. It's being built in China, no doubt. Nothing comes from nothing. Yeah. I Look, you know what I look forward to? Reviewing nothing. Me too. Oh, your just, wife will mate, say, Trev, what are you doing today? Nothing. Just, reviewing nothing. Just just for a week, I'm just going to review nothing. <laughs> I think the jokes have run its course now. Really? Yeah, nothing. Wouldn't you put Jerry Seinfeld as the face of this company? <laughs> Cost them a bit. <laughs> they probably don't have that money, do they? Maybe not. Right, Depends enough. on how well sales go on JB Hi Fi. They're doing very well. Doing very well. That's what the tagline should be. Nothing. We're doing, doing very, very well. well. It'd yeah. only be us that gets it, I think. Yeah. I think other people get it too. All right, Stephen. It was lovely talking to you, and uh, we should do it, it again usual, next week. Mate. It was uh, There was nothing in it. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to keep going all day. I'm going to put that in the head. I've got to remember to put <laughs> There's nothing. There's nothing. Nothing doing. Nothing to talk about. Nothing. No. We talked, we talked about, about nothing. We talked about nothing. <laughs> Oh, boy. Why would you call a company nothing? Well, look at us. We're talking about it. It's yeah, called true. nothing. All right, mate. See you next week. Bye-bye. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech.